What's up guys, I'm Field here and welcome to a new video. Today's video we're going to be doing another subscriber replay review but before we get into that I want to wish you all a very happy new year and a happy 2017. It's been an incredible year for support from you guys, I can't thank you enough and I want to kick this year off right by making much more content for you guys to enjoy that means more videos and more streams. With any luck I'll be getting a video out every day to every two days so make sure you manually check your sub box for those because YouTube doesn't always send them out to you even if you're subscribed which is quite a annoying but nothing I can really do about it so make sure you check with your sub box to see if there's a new video I also made a stream discord uh, which is you know just a basic uh, discord that you can use for anything from tank discussions looking for platoons I hang out there a lot so if you want to ask me questions I'll be around uh, and you can just post your questions in there I'll probably put a new FAQ in there as well sometime but if you want to check it out I'll put the uh, invite code in the description of this video uh, and you can just join it and just hang out but without further ado let's get into this replay review so the replay I have for you guys today is submitted by Sean Marie, who's in his FV215B on Runeberg Encounter. He has a platoon of tier 10 heavy tanks and the matchmaking is actually really good. Now, before I actually get into the battle itself, I just want to remind you guys, um, if you're going to send in a replay, make sure it's 9.17 now. Um, a lot of you sent me some good replays, but I actually couldn't really watch them anymore and record over them because I forgot to save my 9.16 client like a pleb. So yeah, I can't view them, so I do apologize for that so if you have any 9.17 replays send them to me you guys sent me a, a ton of replays um, a lot of them are still really high damage games um, and I don't understand because a lot of you say in the emails like I know this is not what you're looking for but yes it's not what I'm looking for um, I will let you guys know if I'm gonna do um, you know replays where I suppose you can show off I don't know uh, um, I'll let you know, guys know if I'm gonna do those types of replays but uh, for now we're just doing these replays which are focused around mediocre sort of battles that we can see if we can uh, have a look at them and, and what could be improved about the battle. Now, usually I'm gonna say, and I think it's applicable to this battle in particular, it's almost always positional. Um, a lot of you guys just, you know how to micro the tanks just fine, you know you know where to aim, you know how to lead your shots, all that great stuff about microing the tank. You guys pretty much know how to do it for the most part. It's mostly down to positioning. So let's actually get into the replay. So like I said, the matchmaker is really good here. Um, so he has a lot, of, a lot of potential in this battle to farm quite a lot. Now, he's immediately going towards the city area, and, and I think this is the first mistake, because it might be um, sort of a natural instinct. You're a heavy tank, you know, you go city, right? Um, but, you know, you can look at the enemy team, and there isn't really any kind of real threat to him um, that could be really in the 9-0 area. Even if the tank destroyers go there, they're not really that effective, especially the JP100. Um, but he could be very effective. His, his DPM would absolutely shred anything over there. Um, you know, if there were, were a bunch of tier 10 mediums on their team uh, versus his team having none, then that would be a different story. Then you're looking at a very risky 9-0 line because the tier 10 mediums could be a real pain. High DPM, they could catch you out from different angles and that could be a problem. But this, as it is, there's a bunch of tier 8s uh, and I really think he could be really effective over there. Um, bully them get map control and you don't have to worry about the cap because it's encounter the cap is far slower um, so as long as you have something over there to delay for a little bit you have a lot of time now uh, as you can see here there is a certain uh, STA2 player there that you may or may not recognize and when Shrumari sent me the email for this battle he said uh, he sort of teased me about this and uh, I thought well who, who is he talking about but uh, yeah there there he is um, making some interesting interesting trades there um, now, obviously, as, as a tier 10 here, you've got lots of armor, lots of hit points. Your gun should be almost permanently active uh, because, you know, you have to have to be able to bully these tanks out as the tier 10 in the in the game here. Um, but as it is, you know, you, you get like, occasional shots against people that are poking for reasons unknown. Um, and he, he's going to come back. Uh, blows my mind. Hashtag tank better. Anyway, um, yeah, so there's, there's, there's a nice little... Uh, Nice little start to the game in terms of a little bit of farm, but I still think that the 9-0 line is, is where, it, you know, the game could really be controlled. Now, Shormory's beginning to push up the middle here, and I think this is going to be a bit of a problem as well, um, because if you don't have control of the mini town, the 9-0 area, uh, this shuts down on you very fast. You can get collapsed on, you're going to have tanks in your side as well as in front of you, and it's not going to be a fun time. 
Your FP215B armor will count for nothing if you have to angle against too many different targets from too many different directions. I mean, not that the frontal armor is actually that great anyway, to be honest with you, but it's still better than having to have people on your side. Um, but Shormarie is, is pushing, and, and this is dangerous because, um, you know, his team is beginning to lose. Now that he's just killed that 704, um, this is where he has to run. Um, you know, because at this point, there is no protection for him. Um, he has to move back to where his T-57 is and his allies are um, towards sort of the entrance of the city. That's a little unfortunate, but um, this is so dangerous now because now that his team has no 9-0 control, it, it could all end in tears because, yeah, it's dangerous. And also, let's not forget the artillery, which will have a direct line of, of range on him here, uh, which is part of the problem with being in the middle. There is no cover from artillery uh, that could be on the A line. So you're going to have a hard time if he decides to focus you. It may just be a tier 9 bash already. Um, there could be a lot worse, and 53 55 for example, but it's still really, really sketch. Um, so he's beginning to move up here, and there's the artillery. Uh, yeah, this is, this is really, really dangerous. Um, so um, if you were going to push to the middle there, um, you have to, have to be really careful about the 9-0 line, because if you lose it, you have to run away. Um, you have to retreat and you have to back up because otherwise it's just gonna it's just gonna be a surround and you, you cannot allow yourself to be surrounded um, and this is sort of an offhand comment and I should have brought it up in the beginning I would also drop the 2HE to 1HE the FE doesn't carry many rounds I don't think you really need 2HE it's such a small thing though but you know whatever preference maybe um, anyway but yeah now he's having a bit of an issue with tanks around him there's an E4 that is the last thing he wanted in his side uh, yeah, it's going to be difficult for him to get out of this now. The WZ is just having a fun time farming him. Uh, yeah, it, it's difficult. Um, he has to get to the building uh, and then and then hopefully somehow be able to protect himself. But no, the nah, F, uh, excuse me, the F50B is never going to allow him to get a, get away with that. So I think the critical thing here was purely the positioning. Um, I, I do think the 9-0 line would have been a much better choice in this particular battle. You would have been able to control the map a lot easier. Uh, you don't really have to worry about the threat of the cap in this game. So I think your heavy tank team could have really bullied it. You know, there's no tier 10 mediums to really challenge you out of the position. And I think it could have been much more effective of a battle. So this is why uh, I think positioning is so, so important in these games. And it really allows you um, to, to go above and beyond your current uh, ability levels. Because, you know, you, can see, you know how to aim, all that stuff. You know, uh, a lot of people know how to micro the tanks really well but um the the, the difference between you know uh, people in the okay bracket and people in the unicum bracket sort of thing is is positioning knowing how to read the map and you know understand where you need to be in the battle to be most effective and be able to keep your gun alive and active um, in order to affect the battle but a huge thank you to Shore Marie, sorry for the name again, uh, for sending in the replay. It was a great example of exactly what I'm looking for uh, in order to help you guys uh, learn from these replays and, and see what you can improve on. Um, it does take a lot to send in something like this that's more, more in, uh, open to scrutiny than say something that's like an 8,000 damage game. So I really do appreciate it. And hopefully it was helpful to you and also to you guys that are watching. Um, you know, the most important thing is not to take out, oh, this is what I should do on Runeberg Encounter in this exact scenario. You know, it's more to think about what, what the team listings mean for you. You know, think outside the box. Don't just say, okay, I'm a heavy tank, I go here, I'm a medium tank, I go here, et cetera, et cetera. You know, think outside the box. Um, but thank you so much, guys, for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully I'll catch you on the next one.